best player. Who is it going to be? I, I, I spent all day thinking about this and there was two players I was thinking about. Mine was Foden and Cole Palmer. And the, the reason I never went for Cole Palmer, maybe it's, it's wrong to say this, but just the fact that he was with Chelsea and they hadn't had a great season and he hadn't played in the Champions League and maybe against the elite competition, but I could have tossed, tossed the coin on it, basically. I think Cole Palmer has been absolutely sensational this season. But I, I think this season for Foden, we know he's brilliant. I think it's been a breakout season in some ways where it almost feels like he's one of the main players in the team. Because if you remember, the Champions League final, he was on the bench. You know, the last game of last season, the big, you know, City win the treble, he's involved. But he wouldn't have felt like as what he feels this season, where he just feels central to everything Man City are doing. What makes Odegaard the best player this season? I, I, I didn't have to think about it at all. I absolutely think that every game I've watched of Arsenal, um, he's a beautiful player. Um, and... He is Arsenal's, I think he knits everything together. Everything. I mean, obviously, I love Rice, I, I love Foden, I love all the players that have been, we've been talking about. But for me, that is an absolute unbelievable football player. And I think the best player in the league that I've seen this season on a regular basis, the person that takes the ball on the half turn, tries to play the balls through into the, the right type of passes. If he had, for instance, um, you talk about De Bruyne, but if, if he had sort of a striker that made those little darting runs and, you know, like an Aguero or that type, I mean, honestly, the amount of chances that he creates is unbelievable. He, he's become the De Bruyne, hasn't he? He's unbelievable. Him. Yeah. And surely he's got levels to go as well yeah. at his age. I think that's a peak this season. If he stays at this level, it's <laughs> unbelievable. Um, best young player. Well, you've mentioned him already, Jamie, because he was in the running for your player of the year. Uh, this is this is a player who's just brought joy to all of us, whether you're a Chelsea fan or not this season, isn't he? Yeah, when they signed him, I just thought they've got so many wide players, so many players that are accumulating in those positions. And obviously, you know, he's got talent, but I, I don't think anybody will have thought that the goals and the output that's come from him would have ever, ever been like it has. I mean, um, I, honestly, massive surprise that he's got to the level he has and what a player. And you, you do ask the big question, how can Manchester City have ever let that player go? As many good players as they've got, you think they've got Doku or you think they've got other players, or Bernardo Silva's not going to go on forever. He would be the perfect replacement for a Bernardo Silva playing in between midfield and sort of that wide players. He play, I think at Fulham on Saturday, Bernardo played wide. That, that could be him for the you know what? You, you know You know what I would say on that? When a player goes to another club, we might turn around and say City have made a mistake, Pep shouldn't have sold them. I actually admire Pep for that in some ways because it's easy to... Why? Reach. No, because it would be... Would he have played ahead of Bernardo Silva and Foden? No, he wouldn't but, have. No, my point no, being is... I've heard that argument. No, but it's easy to keep these... Managers don't like being accused of making a mistake with a player or whatever, but he's given them his head and good luck to him what he's done. He wouldn't have expected them to do that. But I'm sick of clubs keeping all of a... A young player... Credit to him wanting to go out and play and move on to Manchester. Get he obviously felt there. he was ready. Yeah, but I, I actually admire Pep. He's given him a chance, and people might say, "Oh, you shouldn't no. have sold him." But he, he'd said, you know yeah. what? He's got to give the give the lad a chance. Give it, he wouldn't have played the football. No, look, we, we we have literally eulogised over Pep Guardiola for years on this program. You can never criticise him, but you, we are allowed to say he got, he got one wrong or that Manchester City got one wrong. If you've known a player from the age of ten, did he join that club? Where would you have played him? Hang on a second. Tell me where you would no, have played him. It's hang easy on. to say it. But hang on a second. In hindsight. He's joined that club at the age of 10. You know his talent. You don't let one of your own go if they're that good. Now, if they've got it wrong and they don't think he's that good, hold your hands up and say, look, to be fair, he's shocked as he surprised us. And, you know, that's fair enough. I honestly, they've either got it wrong. They've got it wrong for one or two ways. They've not really given him a chance and not created a pathway for him. Or, secondly, they've not thought he's that good. Whichever way they've got it wrong, you cannot say Manchester City, one of their own that's come through the ranks from the age of eight, nine, ten, and they let him go. I, I think he will have surprised no. them, but well, got it wrong, he might have surprised Chelsea wrong, as well. The, the level of output Chelsea. that he's well, producing. Wrong, his first would he have played? Season. Oh my God, you can't say where's he. Going anyway, let's play. move on. Ahead of Bernardo if Silva top, or Phil Foden. If he's, a, if he's a top player or De Bruyne, which ones does he play ahead of? None of them. Let's move on, and maybe it's a decision for, for Gareth Southgate as well this summer, because he surely wants to get him in and around his, his team as well for the Euros. Declan Rice, we've talked about already, the best signing you both agreed on that. So who's the best newcomer? Uh, we have got Iriola that uh, we've talked about already for this Bournemouth. Was the, this was the one I was struggling with most, to be honest with you. 
I, I, was, I was struggling most with it because I got the, the, I named I didn't know it was a newcomer to the league. Um, so when you're Julian Lopetegui, who, who um, could well be going in there, you, you're looking at someone like Kudus and thinking this is someone I could build around. Yeah, if they can keep him, absolutely. But I had to ask the stats guys to come up with, <laughs> help me with this. Newcomer was the one I was struggling with. It's the only one that I wasn't really. Um, yeah, that was the one I was struggling with most. Best coaching performance, who's it going to be? Um, all right, so you've, you've interpreted, I think it's fair to I, say, in different ways. I interpreted it differently. So I thought it was best coaching performance in a match. I didn't realise it was over a season. So I thought that Sean Dyche, the way Everton played against Liverpool a few weeks ago in that really important Merseyside derby, the way they went and got about them, big game for them. Uh, they still weren't safe at that time, but it was almost a game that made them safe. I thought that was, to me, the yeah, the, the, probably the game I, I, I thought, yeah, well done to Sean Dyche. He's, he's done it right here. Yeah, we don't mind that. Went to the tracksuit, got him going again. Mm. Uh, but you've gone for a season's performance from Mikel Arteta. So yeah. I guess this is effectively your manager of the season. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about Unai Emery. Uh, but and you might say Arteta could finish, maybe he might finish second again. You know, could we, you know, we'll see what happens in the next week. But I think on the back of what he did last season, the disappointment, to then do that again. And that big decision he made with the goalkeeper. Now, I would say Raya has a lot of protection. I'm still not quite sure how good he is, if I'm being honest. But it was a brave decision and a lot, of, and a decision I think a lot of Arsenal supporters disagreed with getting uh, moving sort of Ramsdale to sub. But for me, sitting back, I'm thinking that's a brave manager and that's a top manager to make a big decision at a time like that where you know you might get criticised, but you know I'm making this team stronger. And I think that sign and bringing Rice in, changing Rice's position, you know, he's come there as a whole midfield player and he's seen he can do more than that. Getting the best And he plays it. And, and have it as well, another one. So, and the football they've played, I think they've tweaked it this season. I think there's a little bit more control this season than maybe it was last season, but it was a bit more gun call, end to end. The way they set the team up defence, I, I think Arteta, top manager. And it was interesting, his reaction to that question yesterday in the press conference about progress. He said, no, this is history that we've made this season because we've already got the most wins, the most goals, and it could still, of course, end in the Premier League title. Biggest overachievers. Uh, Bournemouth, Gary says, and we know why, because he predicted them to be yeah. relegated. <laughs> I was left with no other choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, Villa, Villa were my other ones, so it was, yeah, it was Bournemouth and, or uh, Villa. Yeah, Jamie's gone for Aston Villa, who we've uh, given plenty of praise to tonight. Uh, underachievers. Hmm. It's unanimous. It's a slam dunk for Manchester United. I mean, you both had them in the top four. Realistic, what did you expect? Top four. Yeah. Man United finished third last season. I thought when the sign is, so you'd think they're bringing a better goalkeeper in, better with his feet. You're thinking, what, what, what I thought, they bring Mason Mount in almost to replace Ericsson. Similar sort of, sort of midfield player, uh, trying to get on the ball a little bit. And they brought a striker in who they didn't really have last season. They had we we Wegos, didn't they? Second half of the season. Wegos Martial played a few games. Yeah. As well, yeah. So I thought, well, actually, they finished third last season. Maybe a little bit of an overachievement because I think Liverpool and, and Chelsea were really poor last season, which helped United get to third. But I just thought they've strengthened sort of through the centre of the pitch, and I, I, I didn't see them drop out besides you know the top four. All right, let's finish with the favourite game, and this has been a tough one because there's been so many uh, you would think to choose from in the Premier League this season. Wait, there's no extra time in the Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> my favourite game, to be fair, my favourite Premier League game of the season was the Chelsea Tottenham game when uh, they, went night, to, they went to nine men and Tottenham were amazing with nine men. I thought it was all one of the most Why didn't you pick that then? Because to be fair, the FA Cup quarter final United <laughs> v Liverpool was really good, you know. <laughs> you should have watched it. If you don't watch it, the FA Cup, it's quite a good competition yeah. sometimes. <laughs> it was a joyous moment, wasn't it, for uh, Amad Diallo and for, for Manchester United? We, we had a, quite a few 4 4s this year, haven't we, Cheats? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I do think this season, and, and on this show, the, the games that we've had, the goals we've had, I mean, tonight sums it up as well. I commentate on that game, that was a Super Sunday game, and I think my line... Brilliant game. Yeah, I, I, I think my line that I got pulled up at, at Sky, just before the TV deal, was, uh, this is why we pay the big bucks. Uh, <laughs> for the, for the, uh, Thanks for sharing. For the TV rights, yeah. But, it's not but, the only time he's been pulled up this season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was that week. Yeah. <laughs> let's, no, let's, listen. Next it's... category. Favourite oh. thing you've been pulled up for this yeah, season? Yeah, no, that's yeah. not there. Dortmund's the latest one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. Excellent. Have you got uh, a favourite goal? 
Do we have favourite oh, yeah, goal? No, my, mine was Ganacho. Mine yeah, was Ganacho. Yeah, we did pick one, didn't we? What was yours? Yeah. Probably not, not enough space on the graphic, is that what yeah. it was? What would it, what would it be? Uh, Ganacho. Yeah, well done. Well done to Alejandro Ganacho. And uh, well done to Dave Gannon. Thank you very much. Well done. Uh, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. There's the uh, award winners. Be kind with your comments. It, it, it's, it's not serious. That Them teams are never going to play. And, Don't and worry about believe it. Believe it or not. See, they take it sure, very you? personally. No, I'm fine. You sure. just, just get held out on social media. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, boys. Uh,